hey guys, I'm, uh, I'm away from my office, so I apologize not having my normal video on to give a better look right here. But anyway, um, I'm so excited you're here. I'm here. Uh, lots of good stuff going on with foreclosures. And man, Stacy, kudos and thank you. Thank you for putting this platform out there. This is it's as you said it's 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 a it's it's a one-stop shop i mean anything you want to learn in real estate she's got it you know i've been around 30 years i'm in atlanta georgia i, I actually started i bought my first house in 1991 and it took me a year to get my offer accepted and i actually had to i had to uh, uh be creative to get it done my first house was a hud foreclosure a year that's how green i was i was very young had no idea how to do the business, but it was a HUD foreclosure. Tell you a little bit more about that later. My second one was a VA foreclosure. And then I bought a corporate relocation. And then I bought four properties in Gwinnett County, Georgia, which is an amazing place. Everybody wants to buy in Gwinnett right now. And I bought, uh, they were from the savings and loan collapse. Once again, foreclosures. Um, but right after that, I really learned in every one of those started out as MLS listings. So those were post foreclosures. Those are what we call REOs, right? Foreclosures has three different stages. We'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, but the uh, main thing is, is, is how to diversify, right? How to, to ebb and flow, how to know where we are in the real estate cycle, how to know where you have to focus. How do you get into this business when you're brand new and not spend a ton of money a ton of time and not get anywhere? So back to this forum, uh, Mike was amazing. Um, you guys go back and listen to it over and over. Watch Mike's presentation. You know, I was talking to Stacy earlier. It's kind of like learning a new word. Before you learn that word, you don't even know it exists. Once you learn the word, you hear it and you see it everywhere. So as you're growing in real estate, I, I like to, I, I'm always watching um, in, in, uh, instructors and in seminars because I always pick up something new. Where you are today is different than where you were a year ago and where you will be in a year from now. And so again, this REI, if you're, if you're on the fence to think about REI USA, give it a start because so much, you just go there as, as a member and pick up and watch that video at the time you need it. Uh, he had so many gold nuggets. And for those of you just getting started, you might go, wow, that was a lot of information. And it was a lot of information. Dave, fantastic. He drilled deep into one aspect of doing your marketing. And unfortunately, I'm going to go into a lot of information tonight in a very short period of time. So take a deep breath, get up a pad of paper, go get some copy paper, whatever you have, get a pen and be ready to take notes. Of course, this is also recorded so you can watch it later. Um, foreclosures, you have to know again, where's the market? And everybody now will tell you that the market is hot, hot, hot. Foreclosures are still in moratorium stage. And so because of that, in the three stages of foreclosures, I'll tell you what happened to me in the last 30 years and what stage I'm in now of foreclosures versus what stage I might've focused on three years ago and eight years ago and 15 years ago. So you have to understand that. And so I'm gonna help you understand that a little bit better. Let me go ahead and start to share my screen. And you guys, I want you to um, uh, put your questions in, in the chat box too. Uh, Stacy or Christy, maybe help me if you do see some there. Give me a okay. second here. Let's yeah. see, I wanna go, I'm gonna set up here. Tell me if you can see me. Mm -hmm. Can you see my presentation? Yes, looks great. Awesome, awesome. So, um, <clears throat> so this is your three-day challenge, how to go out there, market for deals. I'm going to talk specifically today on marketing for foreclosures right now, where we are in 2021. So, you know, when, I, I, I've, I've founded the ultimate foreclosure formula and my, the foundation of my business is exactly that. It's whatever I'm doing, it's you have to know how to find them, how to fund them, how to fix them, how to flip them or, or, or hold them, whatever your exit strategy is. So we're going to go into finding them and in, in, in what to do when you find them right now. I really believe strongly that this is the time to get in the game. You know, we're at a place that June 30th this year, two weeks from now, less than two weeks from now, uh, the moratorium is scheduled to end. And once that ends, that means the lenders have the right to start foreclosing again. 
Now, not everybody stopped foreclosing, but because of the foreclosure moratorium, the majority of foreclosures have been put on hold. So you know what's going on? It's going mm, 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 boom, and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna break open wide open. So the foreclosure pipeline has been building and building and building because of moratorium putting it on hold since when? Since about April last year, 2020. Also, the government intervened and put together the CARES Act and, and came up with the forbearance. So the end of this month is the last time anyone who is current can put their loan in forbearance. And, they, and that's another pipeline of foreclosures, even though it's called forbearance, there's people out in the media calling it the incubator, the foreclosure incubator. And so they're just incubating. Unfortunately, a good percentage of those people uh, will not be able to, to come out on the end of their forbearance and start making their payments again. So, you know, eventually the government has to stop printing money. And so what happens is that's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect real estate. It's going to affect people's ability to buy homes and keep their homes. So depending on the market you're in, you're going to see a lot of changes between now and 2023. So it's going to be a slow go because of the government's intervention. But get in the business now while the numbers are low. But I'm going to show you primarily right now this is georgia so i i buy foreclosure lists in georgia for the entire state of georgia every month and i have done so since the beginning of 2000 and right now there are only 561 properties in the entire state of georgia but that's a 45 percent increase over last month last month we had like an all-time low of 379 foreclosures now we're at 561 and the moratorium is still there. So I'm projecting if the moratorium does not extend any longer, which I don't think it will, there are advocacy groups that want the foreclosures not to foreclose this year. And, and, and some will and some won't. And so we'll start to slowly see that number climb, but it's gonna climb. And what's gonna happen is once it gets to double that number, once it gets to 1100, I'm predicting it will double and double and quadruple that's what we saw from 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 11, 12. Those numbers were off the chart high. We were at the highest ever in number of foreclosures. But still, at the beginning of 2009, there were 616,000 foreclosure notices across the country in the first quarter of 2009. What's going to happen because of this moratorium, because of this forbearance, and the millions of households that are affected that number will be dwarfed. And so Stacy and I have, have had conversations. In, my prediction is we're not really gonna start seeing the brunt of it until 2023. This, this year is a wild card year. Nothing much is gonna change, uh, but 20, by the end of spring 2022, reality will probably hit. I don't know what's gonna happen between now and the end of this year in, in politics, in the economy. Some crazy stuff is getting ready to happen is what people saying, but what's going to happen in real estate is going to show itself, in my opinion, by spring is our strongest market in real estate at the end of spring. So summer next year, we may start seeing the rumblings of where the economy is really going. Now, market value, property values in a lot of areas, if your population is not decreasing, your property values are not really going to go down. You're not going to see a whole lot of that yet. That's a few years out until something like that happens. We're nowhere near that cycle. So I'm not worried about the property values as a whole, but as real estate investors, this is our three day challenge. How do you market to find these deals? So let's spend some time there. Um, one is, again, you have to be more virtual, less in person. People are still a little skittish about being in person. So you have to find ways to be virtual and make it easy for people to do business with you. In other words, find out what their needs are and meet their needs. You know, everybody says we buy houses. And so be a little bit different. I got a phone call today off one of our text messages. I sent out to about 200 on those foreclosures. And she picks up the phone. She says, you text me. Um, who is this? How'd you get my number? 
how you respond <laughs> becomes very, very important, right? And, and, and so my response is that, hey, we're looking for properties in the area. I said, I primarily um, you know, work with families in distress situations, whether they be inherited properties, divorces, foreclosure, forbearance. I said, we have a lot of different families that we work with. What's your situation? Tell me what happened. You know, she says, well, I have an inherited property and so on and so forth. And so you have to learn how to create that, um, you know, you just create that, that relationship out of nothing. And so that becomes the most important thing. This is the cycle that I'm talking about. And, and I'll tell you where we are as far as that it goes with foreclosures. Ask everyone, do you know someone who needs to sell a house now, who needs to sell a house in 2021? who needs to sell a house in the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, create a sense of urgency, uh, talk to people, just go out there and talk to people. If you're paying for your gas, go inside, don't pay at the pump, go inside and say, hey, I'm looking to buy a house in the area. Do you know anybody I can help in their, in their real estate? Do you know anybody I can, uh, that needs to sell a house in the next 30 days? You know, try to be helpful. Vacant properties are, are, are the gold right now because you wanna focus on vacant properties because they don't have to worry about buying a house. If you're buying a house right now, or you know anyone that's buying a house right now, you know how tough that is. So you wanna find focus on vacant properties, right? Be helpful. A lot of times I'll go and knock on the neighbor's doors and I'll say, hey, do you know who owns that house over there? We're, we're working on properties in the area and we wanna go ahead and fix up the yard if, if we can get permission. I love that tactic. That's just a, a, a indirect way of getting a neighbor to help you. Neighbors would love for you to clean up that, that bad lot. Add value for the seller. So be the go-to person in your area. Uh, a lot of people are going to need help. You got to find ways of, be, of building relationships, uh, find ways to be of assistance. Um, you know, I like to say all the time that time changes things in real estate. You have to be organized and keep a follow-up file. When it comes to foreclosures, a lot of people in foreclosure don't get foreclosed the first time around. So what you have to do is you have to be, if you've created a conversation, if they like you, if they trust you, you have to be able to follow up later. So that becomes one of the most important things to do. And like I said before, tell everyone you're buying houses. Three stages of foreclosure. Right now, you need to focus on stage one. And the reason I say that is that's where we talk directly to the homeowners. So today I'm gonna to show you a lot about buying houses from homeowners and where to do your marketing for that. Stage two is if, is if there is a property in default and it doesn't get caught up, then it goes to the foreclosure process. Some states are judicial, some states are non-judicial. So depending on what state you're in depends on what the process is. But because of the moratorium, again, in the state of Georgia, we've only got less than 600 for the entire state. <coughs> in the height of the market, we had 200,000 foreclosures in Georgia, and now we have 600 in one month. Now, if, if it goes to stage two and it does foreclose, and it does not get sold to a third party, then it comes out into post foreclosure stage three. <clears throat> so sorry. So in stage three, this is where it goes back to the bank. I mentioned to you that I bought, I bought a HUD foreclosure, I bought a VA foreclosure, and I bought savings and loan properties. They were all stage three. So until that, until that, um, mm, that foreclosure pipeline bursts open, you have to be focusing on stage one. So here's where I want to start the teaching right here. Um, there's three places you can go and really spend little money or no money just to find your foreclosure list. Give me one second. <coughs> Sorry, guys. All right, all right. Hang on one minute. <clears throat> Got it. Itch in my throat. I forgot to get my water bottle. So, so, so you want to start with Zillow. I went to Zillow here and all I did is put in New Jersey. Excuse me. And when I put in New Jersey, the thing about Zillow, you can find properties in pre-foreclosure, foreclosure, and REO post-foreclosures. So that's a, th that's a free account you're going to sign up. Let's do this. You don't need to look at me. All right. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much. So, 
sorry. So, okay, so you're going to go to um, set this up so that you can find properties in all stages in Zillow. So go set up a free account. And, and here's what I did. Like I, I do saves. I look, I look everywhere. I'm always looking at everything. Once you set up a free account and you start saving properties, you get email alerts. And then I operate out of my email. My email's on my telephone. I mean, yeah, on my phone. And I'm looking at it constantly. I look at these all the time. So then I go back and I start looking and then I, then I double check them into my programs. I look at them in MLS. I look at them to see um, if they're on auction.com or any other sites. So this is the first place you want to set up, develop what your search is going to be. This one here, for example, once you decide, then you go ahead and pick it. From here, I'm going to go ahead and create a map, right? I'm going to create my map for driving for dollars. When you learn how to go out there and start, you know, um, targeting markets, we target markets. So my niche is foreclosures. And my list always starts with foreclosures. So if I'm looking at, let's say, for example, uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia. If I want to look in Lawrenceville, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foreclosure list from Lawrenceville and I've got five houses there. And I'm also going to go ahead and look at auction.com and I'm going to look at post foreclosures in Lawrenceville. And then I'm going to look at for sale by owners. And then I'm going to take my clipboard, I'm going to take my forms, and I'm going to go drive the neighborhoods and I'm going to look for distressed properties while I'm out there. So first thing I do is get my pre-foreclosure list, right? Create my marketing piece to send out. And then you wanna be, it's what we call, have a global presence. And your global presence is learn how to touch leads multiple ways and multiple times. So I may go bring out a flyer, I may knock on the door. I may also um, send out a marketing piece. Also, if I skip trace it, which means do the research to find the individual, then I'm gonna send them text messages, phone calls, emails. Um, and if you, if you can learn how to use social media. So you've touched them in the real world. You've touched them on your phone, on their phone. You've touched them in their email. You've touched them in, 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 the, in the snail mail, in the post office, in, in their mailbox. And you've touched them on social media get a global presence. It doesn't cost money. I mean, it could cost you a dollar or two dollars here and there to get set up. You need a little bit of money to be good at this business. But the main thing is to focus on a territory and then drill deep into that territory. Know everything that's coming and going real estate. That's what you want to do. You want to know everything that's coming and going. So set up your Zillow account and just go in there and, and you're going to have to spend how many people play solitaire on their phone or whatever the games are these days that people play? You know, you spend lots of hours playing games on your phone or doing social media on your phone. Do the same thing for real estate. <clears throat> you want to, you want to, you've got to spend time. You've got to look at your territory and, and, and put your time and energy into it. So that's the first thing I do is I get set up on Zillow, make sure that my email is getting alerts. Then I go to auction.com and set up a free account. Same thing, you can get pre-foreclosures, foreclosures, and REOs on auction.com. I can only tell you so much today. I'm just trying to tell you how to get up, get set up to, to find them. Auction.com auction is amazing. Uh, they are so investor friendly. They want us to do good at, at their properties. The more money we spend, the more money they make. So, so we want to um, get set up on auction.com. Same thing, I like to save my properties and I will start getting alerts from them as well. Here's one, this is auction.com, buy Florida foreclosures right now. Look at this house over here. This is, um, uh, let's see, what do you've got here? This is uh, in Panama City, right? The opening bid is $15,000. Of course, that property is not gonna sell at $15,000, but the opening bid, what I teach investors, what I teach my team is, is if my maximum offer that I'm willing to pay for that house is equal to or greater than that bid, then you should be bidding on that property. You should be bidding on that property. And, and this is one of my, this is one of my fortes is buying at the foreclosure auction. Um, I got an award in 2014 from these guys. My team bought over $75 million worth of foreclosures, online foreclosures with them. That's a lot. We, we, we've developed a, a huge system to be able to do it, but it all starts one by one by one. 
And I said, this is the time to be in the business because if you go to foreclosure uh, auction.com right now, if you go to any of the uh, auctions in your area right now, you're going to see very few in your area. Here's 74 in the whole state of Florida. That's a very low number, right? However, there's a lot of properties there. So start now before the moratorium ends, before the for, uh, uh, foreclosing uh, lenders start foreclosing again, because pretty soon you're going to see, you know, 274 and then 674 in each area. It's going to keep growing. So learn the systems now and, and, and get good at it before everything comes to be. The same list, by the way, the same list that I use for foreclosure is the pre-foreclosure list. What you have to do is you have to learn if your state is judicial or non-judicial. And here's like a, just a small list here. If you go on my website, I'll show you how to get it. But let's say I'm looking at Alabama, there's foreclosure listings, they have a judicial and a non-judicial process. Their foreclosure timeline takes anywhere from one to three months. The redemption period, this is important. Depending on your state, you may or may not have a redemption period in your state. You need to know that. That means if I buy a foreclosure in Alabama, the owner has up to 12 months to redeem their property back. Uh, jump down here, where are we? Uh, Georgia at the bottom there. My redemption period here is none. And, and we have one of the fastest foreclosure timelines for two to three months. So you, you gotta know what that is in your state. You can go to my website, ultimateforeclosureformula.com, click on investor resources and go down and put your state in there and start collecting information. Uh, you look over here to the left, the top cities in foreclosure in the US, lots and lots of stuff going on out there, even though they're on hold. So here, here's, here's Jersey, New Jersey. You guys are a judicial state. So when you pull it up, you can see the law in, in, in Jersey and what you have to go through to be able to buy foreclosures there. How this affects pre-foreclosures, for you guys to buy pre-foreclosures, the longer the foreclosure process takes, the more timeline you have to deal with homeowners directly. So for me, what I like to do right now, and, and for the next 12 months at least, is I'm going to be buying directly from the homeowner. So that's what you're looking for, is you're looking for, how do I get into the pre-foreclosure part of the business? How do I deal directly with the homeowner? Uh, I mentioned the um, ultimateforeclosureformula.com. It's at the top of my screen. And uh, auction.com was the one before that. Zillow was the one before that. second here. Uh, and then so uh, Georgia and Texas, we're non-judicial states. So this is what it looks like. These are frenzies. On the first Tuesday of every month in the state of Georgia and the state of Texas, every county, there's a foreclosure auction and happening outside. So we have a process we repeat every 30 days to look at those foreclosures. That's stage two. If it doesn't sell at the steps, it goes back to the lender and then it's in stage three and it becomes the REO and then you can bid online auctions. So if for the third way to look them up, as I mentioned, go, go to ultimateforeclosureformula.com, click here, look at all the different ways that you can see properties here. They talk about shadow inventory, still haven't figured out exactly what that definition is. There's foreclosures, bankruptcies, rent to own, as is properties. Just put in your territory and we'll pull information. Now, when it comes time to, once you figure out the list that you're gonna work on and at the bottom of the screen right here, it says go to ultimateforeclosureformula.com forward slash reiusabonuses.html. We'll give you free pre-foreclosure leads. If you put in your zip codes, we'll give you free pre-foreclosure leads. I'm trying to look at the, uh, Thing here too. Let's see, I've got a Q&A. How do we get the large cash payment required to buy a foreclosure? This is a common question. I wish it was my personal funds. It's not all my money. Um, you have to develop a relationship out there because when you buy at the foreclosure, that's only in stage two. In stage two, Nicholas says, how do you get the large cash payment to buy a foreclosure? Um, in stage two, you've got to have really good partners, uh, investors behind you. Um, I don't know. There's people that claim that there are lenders that will lend you the money. Uh, depending on the process in your state, 
when you buy in pre foreclosure and when you buy in post foreclosure, there are hard money lenders, there are investor lenders out there. And Stacy's got several of them on REI USA. So you've got to be able to, to put your resources together to find those folks. I had one hard money lender did, did a hard money loan for us in Bentwater, which is an amazing uh, big swim tennis community in Cobb County. And they did a loan for me in 48 hours. Uh, and because I have a working relationship with them. Most of them need probably closer to three weeks, 21 days. Some claim they can do it in 10 days. You gotta get your, get, get your, get your foot in the door um, and, and we can talk about that after, you know, where you can go on a Facebook group together. We'll get some names of some of those for you. But you've got to get, um, it's really an asset-based loan. So in the asset-based loan, they're not really looking at your credit. They're not looking at your, um, your income, but they are looking at your experience. So they want to make sure you have the experience. And that's kind of where we come in. We do partner a lot with our students. Um, but, but if you're just getting started in the business, you want to talk to two or three hard money lenders and find out what exactly they require. And again, in the Facebook group, I'll be happy to, to, to go back and forth with you guys. So you've decided on, uh, you're going to work these five zip codes. Now you've got 15 addresses. You're going to go make some flyers and say, we buy houses, we stop foreclosure. And then you're going to go out and knock on doors. You're going to skip trace, make phone calls, text messages, emails, whatever your, uh, whatever your, your marketing strategy is there. Um, but now you have to know what to say when you're talking to the seller. You need to have a clipboard. You need to have your lead sheets, property information sheets, your authorization to release information. We call it ATRI. This is what we say you need to, to, to start your investor toolbox. This is what you need to build it, right? Again, at the bottom, we got these free forms for you on the website. If you take that, that website from the bottom, we'll get them for you. Um, but you have to start somewhere, right? And so what we do, I'll show you a little bit about what happens. We talked about earlier the ways of communicating. Right now, I'm, I'm working primarily in pre-foreclosures. Once I work a pre-foreclosure, if we don't stop it, then I watch it to go to the steps and I watch it to see if it comes out post foreclosure. And I keep it on all my alerts, all my email alerts. But this is what I was mentioning. You know, you wanna have a global, you wanna have a global presence. So the more touches, the better you're gonna convert. And follow up, follow up, follow up. Time changes things in real estate, guys. People get, people get confused and they say, look, I've got, 3,000 bucks. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to buy a bunch of leads and I'm going to hit them one time. That's not going to get your deal. I would rather you take 3,000 bucks and buy 25% of those leads and hit them five times as much as you would just hit each lead one time. So find a territory and saturate it. Know what's coming, know what's going as far as real estate goes. And then once you do that, this is what you, this is the property information sheet. If we can stop the foreclosure, Mrs. Jones, would you be willing to walk away from your home for what you owe on it? Depending on their answer, where will you go and when? This is it right here. This is the beginning of the business. Once I find somebody who 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 needs to sell their house, then I need to find out: Do I have to bring all cash to closing? Would they be willing to walk away if we could stop the foreclosure? Some people say, absolutely, I'm done with it. I already moved. I just don't want the foreclosure on my record. Some people say, nope, I've got lots of equity. I need at least 10,000 of my equity. Some people say, I don't even know where I'm going. I wanna to try to save my house. That's kind of like the three big buckets of, of what people tell you in pre-foreclosure. So you have to learn how, again, how to solve problems, how to, how to be that person to help get them where they wanna go. These are the, you should take a screenshot, if nothing else, take a screenshot right here. This is my, I'm going to do, I'm going to take over payments, or I'm going to give a low ball cash offer, or I'm going to do seller financing. These are my three basic questions, you know, and, and this doesn't matter if it's pre-foreclosure or, or some other motivation that gives a seller the reason to sell his house. Mrs. Jones, will you sell me the house for what you owe on it? We say that when we want to do a subject to deal and sometimes for seller financing. Subject to means we're going to help by taking, uh, bringing the loan current. We're going to pay what it takes to bring the loan current. And then we're going to start paying the monthly payment on behalf of the owner. So that, that's, 
understanding the creative way of doing the business is really important. Finding it and then understanding this part, I'm gonna tie all this together in a couple minutes, but I want you to understand just finding the motivated seller is not enough. You have to find them. And it's as easy as getting out of, out of your door, driving around your neighborhood right now and looking at overgrown grass. And for some reason, there's a lot of overgrown grass this year. <laughs> so go find the overgrown grass right now. That's the best thing you can do. That's the easiest way to go market for motivated sellers. Additionally, see if it looks like a vacant property. If you find it and it's vacant, go knock on the neighbor's doors, have some flyers. So what I like to teach is don't just target one house. I, I want you to knock on the doors, three houses to the right, three houses to the left, five houses across the street. That's a dozen flyers. Every time you go out with one address, you're gonna knock on a dozen doors and you just say, hey, I'm Darlene. Uh, I'm Darlene with Darby's Houses. We're looking to buy a house in the neighborhood this month. Do you know anybody who needs to sell one? Yes, no, maybe. Also, can you tell me about that house over there? We're cleaning up houses around the corner and we just thought maybe we could help get that yard uh, mowed. Do you know who I can get in contact? It's an amazing way if you would get out of your shell and get out and talk to people. It's an amazing way to find out because they want that house cleaned up too. So that's what you wanna do. So back to the questions. Once you find somebody who needs to sell, will you sell me for what you owe on it? If I paid you all cash and closed on the day you want, what's the least you would take? And then the third creative way is, I love your house, I really wanna buy it. If I give you your price and give you the amount of money they asked for at closing, would you give me my terms of $800 a month until paid? That's the basic seller finance approach. So learning how to go identify the properties and then what to say. I have a free ebook. I keep referring to that same link at the bottom. And I know we're going to get to the end and someone's going to say, what's that link? Stacy? I don't know if you can put that link. I don't know if I can. Let's see if I can copy and paste it. Let's see here. Control C. Um, yeah. Let me try just real quick. I'm gonna, here we go. Check it out. I'm going to put this link, control B. So this link, I have an ebook, a free ebook that goes through these steps. Once you have a seller who needs to sell their house in the next 60 days, it's like I go to QT, I buy gas and I say, hey, John, hey, I'm Darlene. How's it going today? John, I'm looking for somebody who needs to sell a house. Do you know anybody who needs to sell a house? Come on, John, you got to know somebody. And I'll even take it a step further and I'll say, hey, John, I have, um, and I say John because he has a name tag on, uh, we have a cash bonus program. We'll pay you anywhere from 500 to 1500 if you can give me somebody that we can buy a house from, somebody that's not already on the market. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, my sister-in-law, great. What's the address? When can I go see it? Can you make the introduction? Can you take me there, John? What time do you get off today? Can I come back and then follow you over there? Whatever the case is, find the person. These are the easy steps to get started, right? Identify identify the distressed properties, the motivated sellers. What's the address? When can I come see it? The next thing you're going to do is this is I want you to memorize the fair enough script. And again, this is in the free ebook. After you get the above information, if the seller gives you an asking price, you say, thank you so much for taking me the time, taking the time to show me around. I love your house. Let me see how I can make the numbers work. What I want to do now, I want to go back to my office, do a little research on the computer and see what the numbers look like and discuss it with my partners. If the numbers look good and I think we can make it work, I'll call you back and arrange to come back out and go over a contract with you and review the whole process. Is that fair enough? What I'm telling you guys, this is the, this is the three day challenge for new investors. I'm telling you, you don't have to know everything. I'm telling you, get to this place, learn this much about the business. This is the beginner steps. Locate, know what to say once you locate. Know the leading questions, right? The leading questions. Are you willing to sell it for what you owe on it? If they need all cash, what's the lowest you would take? Uh, do you have to have all your money now or can you take some now, some later? Those are the leading questions you have to learn. And then this is your escape plan right here. And then whoever, find some partners in the beginning. You know, uh, we love to joint venture. 
We love for people, we love a, 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 an army of soldiers out there looking for properties. A lot of the folks in Stacy's environment will be happy to partner, make sure they're vested, make sure if you're gonna create a partnership, you know who you're working with. Uh, but if you can at least, what are you bringing to the table? You're bringing the motivated seller. You don't have to understand and know. All you need to know is somebody who's willing to sell their house or needs to sell their house in the next 30 days. That's what I want to, that's what I want you to walk away with today. And remember that this is what the book looks like. The five simple steps uh, just to get started in the business with less than 250 bucks. Um, anyway, so that was, that was really, I wanted to get to that point. Uh, I also have a little bit slower and a little bit longer, the free webinar for you guys. So it goes into a lot more detail than I was able to go into, but I just wanted to at least get you know, to that point um, of, of getting you what you need. You yeah, know tell I mean? everybody when you teach for REI USA and kind of how you do that too. Excellent. So here is, I do the three, uh, the topics are the three stages of foreclosure, ultimate foreclosure formula, every fourth Tuesday of the month. So it's at seven o'clock Eastern time. And, and I love interaction guys. I really want interaction. Um, you know, uh, when we all went virtual, it was really hard for me. I've been teaching real estate investors and agents for over 20 years. And when I have somebody in front of me and they're hungry and they're, and they're asking questions, I'll, I'll go on and on and on. But when I'm sitting on that, that Zoom and it's quiet and nobody participates, it can be tough. So when you come into this, uh, the seven o'clock, fourth Tuesday of the month, be prepared to, to, to interact with me. I'll get up and teach. And I'm telling you, this stuff is amazing. I mean, uh, it, it is amazing. And just like Mike's, just like Dave's, it's amazing stuff. But unless you interact, it's just more good education. I like to call it on the job training. So that's kind of what we do. Um, the main thing is don't be scared to talk to people. On the, on the property information sheet, that's what you have to do. I, I teach, my, teach my investors to practice the property information sheet. You, you have access to go get it for free with that, with that um, link. Go get it for free. Property information sheet, print out 50 copies, get a clipboard and start talking to people. I had, an, I had a partner one time, Stacy, you won't believe this. He, he was, he's an amazing closer. He was a used car salesman. And yet he would say to the homeowner, hey, could you fill this out for me? And they're like, what does this mean? What's your situation? Why are you selling? Well, just tell me what your situation is. Okay. And this says, am I willing to walk away for what I owe? He said, yeah. He didn't even do it. He would have them do it. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you trip through it. It just matters that you ask the right leading questions. So the first thing I want you to do when you walk away from here is print out three copies of it and practice. Take your own home, whether you live, whether you own it or rent it, take your own home and fill out that property information sheet just so you can get familiar with it. Then I want you to turn around to your brother, your sister, your mother, your daughter, whoever it is. And I want you to say, hey, I'm getting into a new job right now. I'm getting into real estate and I, I, I need your opinion. Let me ask you questions. Okay. Just help me through this and role play guys, role play. And, 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 and people don't think I'm serious. The smarter you are, the harder it is to do basics. It's very difficult to stick to the basics. And, and, and investors bring it to me all the time, you know, and they say, well, okay, I got this guy and this and, and other, and, and they want to do this. And I'm like, okay, well, did you ask the questions? No. Can, I, can you get on the phone with us? Sure. And we get on the phone and sure enough, there goes Darlene. What's your situation? Why, why are you selling? What do you hope to have happen? who's living in the house right now you are when did you want to close if they don't know when they want to close i don't have a deal are you willing to walk away for what you owe on it i go into that i go into the mortgage information but that's that's it right there i mean that that's how you train yourself if if you're not going to get whether you go with a partner or into the training programs you know you, you at least take that and practice it now, I think a lot of people really just don't know like what, you know, they're afraid to ask the questions. They don't know what questions to ask. But the truth is, is that the more questions you ask, you know, the more you're going to connect with them anyways and hear their story. Yeah. And people love human. People mm -hmm. love to see that you're human, right? They want to know that 
look, I, you know, like the lady called me today, we're, we're driving to Tampa and she calls me, right? And I know because I use CallRail. One of my, one of my systems is CallRail. I have 10 different phone numbers set up for 10 different reasons. So, and my phone tells me that it was a, it was a, a I use COVID-19 rescue team is what I use as part, one of my foreclosure um, um, messages. She calls and she says, I told you earlier, right? She said, how did you get my number? Who is this? And I have to go <gasps> immediately. I'm like, I'm tense guys. I'm 30 year veteran and I'm tense because I have to disarm her before. And we ended up on the phone for 21 minutes while I was in the car, 21 minutes. And I like call rail because it, uh, call rail is recording the whole conversation. So even though I'm in the car, this is what's good. Remember, follow up, follow up, follow up. Now, one of my players is Holly. Holly's one of my agents. And I said, she, oh, this lady is foreclosure and probate. <laughs> Talk about solving problems, right? And so I said, do you mind if I have Holly call you? And she said, make her text me first. I said, absolutely. And, and Holly's going to call her and then they're going to get on the phone. It's not, oh, it's foreclosure. It's probate. And there's two mortgages. It's a lot of work to get this one done but she wants to walk away from the home. Awesome. And it was so amazing. And a lot of work, but at the end, it's going to be a great deal. That's right. That's right. So, so we have a couple of questions. Let me just answer, ask those. One of them yeah. is, um, I'm very new to the industry and I found real estate has so many branches. I like foreclosures because I expected they'd be motivated. I find that sometimes they are, and I find that they're very defensive. How do you break the barrier over the phone? That's correct. That's correct. She was very defensive. And so, I was human and I tripped over myself and I was, uh, I was like, oh my God, I'm not prepared for this. I'm so tired. I slept two hours last night. We're on the road. I'm not ready, but I had my, I had my clipboard and I had my property information sheet because I knew I was marketing. So I had that where I could write my notes, but I was just honest. And I said, I am so sorry. I said, I, I'm sorry with all the noise in the background. I said, I am, um, I'm actually in the car. I, for, I, I didn't hear, what is your first name again? So remember this to, to, leading questions and the key being questions when you're talking to somebody first of all be excited that somebody's talking to you as long as someone's talking to you whoever's asking the questions are the one that's in control she said who is this how did you get my number she didn't say i'm in foreclosure and i didn't say to her i know you're in foreclosure because that's the only leads that are calling me right now i have no other marketing except my foreclosure marketing she started out by telling me a deceased situation, not a foreclosure situation. And so I've got to backtrack, right? So now I say, hey, Kyle's my probate specialist. And let me ask you a couple of questions. Um, when's the last time you spoke to the lender? And, and here's the thing. I'm trained to be a salesperson. I'm not naturally a salesperson, Stacey, literally. You know, I, I, I spent five years back in the 80s selling Encyclopedia Britannica and went through some rigorous training and memorizing was the key. And so here, what did I do? I have to figure out what question can I ask? How do I disarm her? So I was, I was human, I was honest, I'm in the car, I'm so sorry, I didn't, can you spell that for me? Let me just ask you, uh, what property is this about? You know, if I can get the person talking and this is what you have to do, I say, get these oversized index cards. And when you listen, to, when you come to Ultimate Foreclosure Formula, when you go to Mike's, when you go to Dave's, anybody, when you go to Stacy's teaching, learn what works for you, right? What are those key questions? And the questions are, what's your situation? Why are you selling? What do you hope to have happen? Those should be on index cards big enough, put them on the, put them on the wall so that when you're like, oh, what's your situation? What do you have to, what do you hope to have happen? In Britannica, I read the presentation upside down. We did door knocking, we did over-the-counter sales, but it was a it was a rote presentation, same thing over and over again. Now, that's true for me here, but I've got the property information sheet looks like this, right? Sometimes I come in at number three, sometimes I come in at number one, sometimes I come in at number 10. Uh, it all goes with talk and practice in advance. You've got to practice. I can't tell you any other way. I have students, like I said, when you were in my classes in, in, in face-to-face, um, I'm sorry, you're red-faced, you might be crying because I'm gonna call on you. 
I was that kid in class that cried when the teacher called on me. I was extreme introvert, right? So, so I, I'm going to teach you, you have to talk. If you want to be in real estate, the question is why? And, and let's make it worth your time. It's a business. It's not a hobby. So, so you have to be really serious and, and, and we're not going to hurt you, right? So we're not going to scream at you. We're not going to threaten you. I had someone threaten me in text. Let's see how you like dealing with the law. You know, and then somebody sent me an, a, an emoji. I won't say what it looked like, but it wasn't a good one. It, it doesn't matter. I just, someone said, what do you do when that happens? I look for the next positive result, <laughs> the next positive statement, because the truth of the matter is in, 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 in advertising, in, in sales, it's all numbers. We've all heard it. And it, it's only one out of a hundred. Am I going to buy? That means night potentially 99 times they're going to be mean and ugly to me. Just let it go. You no, know, and, and even like even self storage, it's the same. I called 15 people today, you know, because mm -hmm. you know I wanted to record some calls for my students. I called 15 nice. people, and uh, you know, one was like maybe wanted to talk, and that's it. Like you, you know, it it's a, out of a hundred people, one person is going to want to actually sell. People don't realize the numbers. It takes a lot of effort to get one deal. It's so true. It's so true, and and that's like I said, unfortunately. We're, we're, we're in amazing times right now in real estate. I can't tell you enough. I'm so excited to be seeing this, this stage, this, this, what do you call it, uh, in, in real estate. Um, I'm so excited to be seeing it again. Amazing times. And yet, it's, you have to go back to the basics. You have to dig for gold. It, it's not go to MLS and buy a house. It's not go to the foreclosure auction and buy a house. Maybe in, in, in 12 months from now, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, you can start bidding online again. I'm still bidding online and not winning again. I told you we won $75 million worth of houses in 2014. I'm looking forward to three years from now so we can start again. But in the meantime, it's driving the neighborhoods. You don't have to knock on the door. If you're so scared to do that, later on this year, Stacy, we'll talk about doing a door knocking together. You know, let's get, let's do a door knocking session and get a bunch of people out there. We start, usually we start at the IHOP. We spend an hour and a half for breakfast and we teach and everybody gets, I give clipboards out, all of the forms, all of that. Let's do that together. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then we'll spend, and if you're going out, if you're going out for a day in the field, you need to be out there for no less than four hours. And we are coming back with Intel. I'm not necessarily looking for somebody to say, buy my house today. I'm looking for my territory. I'm trying to decide what territory I want to focus on. And then I'm going to come back. I have what I call AI, right? My action items. Uh, you know, I got to go skip trace it and then, and then start making phone calls, skip trace it, send text messages, skip trace it, send direct mail out, Be, get your global presence together. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what we do. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, we have a couple more questions. I'll just get them done. Do you, do you then turn around and pitch these properties to your buyers? Would love to hear the tips on getting qualified buyers instead of all the wholesalers trying to daisy train. So that's a great question. Um, it's one of my superpowers. Uh, I don't have a problem finding buyers and I'm a real estate broker. Sometimes I put my real estate broker hat and talk to you. Sometimes I put my investor hat and talk to you as a real estate investor you know, we all bring something to the table. Who asked that question, um, uh, Stace? Who asked that question? That was Colleen. Colleen, you know, you bring something to the table. I'm not sure who you are, Colleen, or what you're really good at right now in real estate. Um, but, but you have to find, if you're asking that question, find somebody like me on your team, right? Um, I say I'm a real estate agent, I'm a real estate broker. You have to build your dream team. One of the things you need to do, if you're looking for good buyers with lots of money, uh, depending on what state you're in, go to the courthouse during the foreclosure. So in Georgia, it's very easy. Texas, it's very easy. You go to 254 uh, counties and, and go outside during the hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and make yourself known. Do it a couple times. Find investors who are there not only about 10% are buying, find the investors who are buying at the steps and say to them, hey, are you looking for any more properties this month? I've got some properties. 
build your buyers list like that. Those are easy ways. Right now, it's not difficult to find a buyer. If you've got, if the numbers are good, the buyers are easy to find. I'm more than happy to find you. Come to me on Facebook group, REI USA Facebook group. Bring me some kind of, hey, look, I'm in North Carolina, I'm in Jersey, I'm in DC, wherever you are and say, Darlene, you said if I had a good seller, you could help me figure this out. I will help you figure it out because it, buyers are not hard to find if the numbers work. Exactly. I agree. Okay. Wait, we have two more questions. You mentioned that we should have several touch points to the lead. What is the most effective drip? Fantastic question. The most, everything works. If you work it consistently, it can't tell you that one is any better than the other. You know, um, I get these emails every day. It says, um, <clears throat> um, cold calling, cold calling, who's cold calling direct mail. It's a dinosaur. Nobody's direct mailing anymore. I like direct mail because guess what? It makes the phone ring. They call me. They've given me permission to speak to them. So, but it costs me more money and more time to get direct mail because it's, it's slower. If I call them on the phone, they're yelling at me. It hurts. People feel like those words are, 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 are hurting me, <laughs> you know? So it depends on your, how thick your skin is. Everything works, but it's not easy for everybody to do each of those things. And the thing is too, is that you don't know what people's, people's like thing is. That's right. That's right. Very good point too. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it text? Is it voicemail? Is it cold calling? Is it emails? You know, so you just got to do it all nowadays. Sorry, but that's just how it is. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When the auction is online, how quick do you have to deliver the funds? Fantastic. Online auction. I'm so excited about online auction. And, and I could quickly tell you, you, about, you talk about this in your, in your, tra in your training sessions. Yeah, I do. I do. As a matter of fact, in, in, in the, in the uh, one we do with you guys on the every fourth Tuesday, I think we had one recorded a couple months ago where we just did online auctions. I'll do one again in the next couple months. But I love online auctions and, and in most auctions online, it takes 30 to 45 days to close. So again, if you're there and you're trying to do that, I'm, I'd love to help you because if you're going to be consistent online auctions, you're going to get some deals and you don't have to have all your own money. At the steps, that's the toughest place to do this. You don't want to do it as a newbie, but online auction is a great place to start. Yeah. I remember if, when I first started, I was buying stuff off Hubsu. Are they, yeah. Is Hubsu even around? Um, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yep. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I just sold one of my rental properties. We bought on, Kelly and I bought on Hubzoo, uh, I think it was in 2016. We just made a ton of money, you know, and, and we were making five, $600 a month cash flow on top of our, our mortgage payment mm -hmm. on that property. We bought it from Hubzoo, 56,000 in Paulding County. It was a four bedroom, two bath by the time we were done with it. Awesome. I love it. Good. Okay. Well, uh, Colleen says I bought one out of state auction that I rehabbed and sold last year. The next one I tried to buy had a reserve that was bananas. Auction.com kept relisting and relisting and relisting. Seems like they want top dollar too. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And remember this time changes things. So what I want you to do, Colleen, um, first of all, I talk about doing preliminary underwriting. And when I'm at the beginning of the process, don't spend a lot of time analyzing, spend a little bit of time and make offers, make, make more offers, see less houses. That's my mantra. But when I get to this point, like Colleen said, she saw one um, in, in uh, the reserve is crazy high. Time changes things in real estate. And so the banks, the investors, Wall Street, they are driven by the quarterly results. And the last quarter of the year ends on 1231, December 31st. So you want to kind of be, be cognizant, Colleen, as you're doing your follow-up, you want to build your follow-up, you know, um, um, program on, on those properties. Again, put them in your, first of all, put them in your alerts and then keep following them. And then Colleen, don't keep your highest bid. I learned this from auction.com. Don't keep your highest bid in your pocket, right? Put your bid out there. And, and the reason is sometimes today they don't take 120,000, but when they get to the end of fourth quarter, they may sell it for 105,000. And guess who they're going to call? Somebody who put their bid on the table. That's one of the secrets to this business online auctions. 
Well, and you said something that was key too, which I love, which is like, but you got to be making offers. The thing is like one step is the marketing. You have to be marketing. That's why we're talking about marketing right now. Yes. And the next step is making offers. If you're not making any offers, guess what? You ain't going to get any property. You got to yes. make offers. Yes. You know, that's, that's the key. This business is so much fun and it's so scary and it's, it's so overwhelming. Don't do it alone. Um, I told you it took me a year to do my first deal. I never thought I'd be this person talking to you guys. Never thought I was scared to talk to people. I hated confrontation. I hated sales, even though I was trained. I never realized that training was amazing for what I do in real estate. And I, and I like to pass it on to you guys. So it's good. Just keep it up. Keep it up. This is a great time. And I was going to say too, also like with the offers, I mean, I always tell my students, just make the offer that you, you feel comfortable with. All they can do is say no. That's right. That's right. You know, so like, just make, who cares? Just practice, you know, just make some offers. Yes. Colleen said she needs 10 of me. I need 10 of me too. So let's figure out how to connect. I hope to see you on uh, every fourth Tuesday. Exactly. Then- so Darlene, thank you so much for your time. As you join REI USA. It's free to give us a try. So just join, hang out with us. If you have, if you are a member and you have not been to her session yet, I highly recommend that y'all go because she has got it down. Right. So, um, so I appreciate everybody hanging out to the last day and Darlene have a great uh, trip and, um, and we'll talk soon. Okay. Well, let's try to do some lunch when, uh, when uh, we get back. Okay. That sounds great. Thanks so much. All right. Bye guys. Bye everybody. Take care. Okay. Bye guys.